Alright, welcome back. I'm CT Stealth and this is Introduction to 3 Effects uh, Rigid Bodies Part 2. Uh, this is a third video in my series, so feel free to check out the first two in order to get caught up to speed of what we're doing. Um, so, this is my, you know, last scene that I left off with, except uh, I fixed my collision layers so they don't move from one another. Um, however, there's uh, a few things I want to point out to you that are going to be very helpful. Um, as you can see here, I'm, I got the perspective inside. I'm not really using this over here. I couldn't get rid of it. but Anyway, I'm going to go to the side view here. And I want to show you uh, the layout of my bricks. Um, just It's just a wireframe mode. And as you can see, uh, most of my bricks are unevenly spaced in different places. Now, and ideally, it would be nice to get them all well spaced apart. Uh, but the problem with this is, if I were to click play, as you all saw in the last video, uh, some of the bricks started moving before the ball even got to it. It's because of the sheer force of the, the gravity from this ball actually affects the bricks, even though they're low in relative mass. So what I want is I want my bricks to stay absolutely still until the ball hits it. And I do that by taking the moment in which uh, the, the ball initially hits the bricks into account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my ball here and I'm going to go get rid of x-ray so I can get a faster render time. And sometimes I have to just play blast this but right now I really need to see where it hits the ball. So I kind of wait and unfortunately there's nothing I can really do but I, I wait until I get to the point of the ball where the ball hits the brick and what I want to do is I'm gonna guess it's gonna be like right around here in which I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna stop this because it's kinda of taking a while and I don't have that that much time so uh, I would I would let it to get to the point in which the, the ball is about to hit the brick so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna kinda of cheat a little bit say oh it made it to the point in which I want it to be hit um, so what I need to do is remember that passive active collider I told you about well that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to my channel box here and go to rigid bodies and you'll notice there's uh, this little active button right here now if this is my frame 20 I want the keyframe to be off, which means I'm going to just type 0 and represents off, and I'm going to key select it. So that means it's, it's passive up until this point. Then I'm going to go one frame in the future, and then I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to right click, key select it. So now you'll notice. It will, it will play smooth until it gets to frame 20 and which it will slow because it's starting the calculation. So it plays smooth. Oh, there it goes. Right there. So, that's what I do. Um, uh, like I said, it's probably going to be, you know, over here by the time the ball gets to there. Um, so you might want to wait it out. Uh, make sure you don't miss it because you cannot scrub once you... Uh, once you start the play blast, you get this purple error. It's actually rather common, and it says the nucleus uh, evaluation is too large, which means it can't calculate the massive skip that you just made by scrubbing. Um, scrubbing can also crash your Maya while doing rigid bodies, particles, and fluid effects. So never try to avoid scrubbing at all possible. Uh, in fact, it looks like it uh, it may have crashed for me. So uh, that was one aspect. I'm just going to kind of go ahead and end this. I wish I had my task manager, but I don't. So, task manager. And I'm just going to go ahead and end it. Oh, okay, it looks like it tried to calculate. So I actually didn't have to scrub. But as you can see, things like that, I mean, if that had been a a bigger change, it could have crashed my line. 
So it's kind of good that I actually have that recorded so that you can see what you're dealing with. So never scrub while doing rigid body or particles because you're going to potentially crash your machine. All right, anyway, so let's get on with the attributes. All right, so I'm just going to select a single brick, and I got these attributes here. Uh, obviously, these two are for the actual cube itself. The rigid body and the rigid solver is what I'm more interested in. Um, the rigid solver is for uh, particular calculations. If it calculates different things, like this, for example, is rigid solver states. So it's going to calculate um, everything that's checked. Uh, if it's any motion or the bounciness, I can turn all any of this off and it won't calculate those different things. Um, so, for the most part, I don't really use this uh, other than the collision tolerance or the start time. The start, start time is where I can say I want it to calculate at this given point. I do, don't want it to start calculating until uh, this is represented by frames. So if I wanted it to start calculating at 60 then I could. Uh, even then I don't even rarely I rarely do that because I, I'll just I'll start it to zero let, let it calculate and then finish and then I'll just I do what's called baking the simulation. Uh, baking the simulation is where um, I basically just I take what I want and I'm like oh I really like that so now I need to bake it and if I can find it real fast, I lose it all the time. Oh, there it is. Bake simulation. And I'll have to click this little option box. And basically, um, I can uh, keep bake the actual simulation so I don't so it, it doesn't calculate anymore. And I can go to the channel box here. And what I like to do is I like to do from channel box and then I select the attributes that I'm using and then I would click bake and it'll go through the whole thing you calculate it one last time when finally done um, you can highlight the bricks let me pull up my outliner and I can literally delete uh, looks like I don't have my rigid bodies displayed but I can do edit delete all by type and go to rigid bodies and it will not calculate anything else and it will play just like a normal animation so uh, that that's that's the main thing that I wanted to show you uh, before I ran out of time so uh, in the rigid bodies here I can add different other things too uh, so like the static friction I can increase the static friction so the, uh, the brakes won't move there's a difference between the static friction and dynamic friction and to be honest I have a hard time remembering the two. Uh, most of the time I do a test. Uh, so I, what I'm going to say is static friction is probably the one that uh, if it's not moving uh, how much friction it will be required for it to move. If you remember in physics uh, if you place a book up against a wall you're going to have to push hard on the wall to make sure that the uh, it doesn't fall down below. So the static friction is the contact friction between two objects. And the dynamic friction is the friction in which it hits other objects, that it uh, loses its, its potential energy. Uh, the bounciness is pretty much exactly what it means, uh, how, how much the object will bounce off another contacting object, whether active or passive. Uh, these different other things, as velocity, spin, force, torque, these are calculated based on the initial settings. I can add initial spin or initial position orientation or velocity. Um, basically, if I add initial spin, when I click play, it will start spinning in the direction I wanted it to, uh, based on the initial spin. So, how does how would that work in my situation? Well, I I need it to I can add initial velocity to this to cause it to explode, and I can add initial spins on the given. Um, on given bricks, but then I wouldn't even need the ball because I'm already saying, okay, as soon as I click play, I want the initial vol velocity to go on along the axis. So it's going to go this way, and it's going to go out in that direction as well as the spin. So I can eliminate the ball, and then I basically have just simulated an explosion without any anything influencing. So that's actually what I'll do for my building. And 
so you kind of need to familiarize yourself with the initial velocity, initial spin, and kind of give it a few experiments in creating this uh, uh, a simulation without the ball hitting the bricks. Um, uh, I'm I'm just about out of time, so I'm gonna have to wrap it up. Um, but I will I'll see y'all next video. Um, I'll be starting particles, and I hope to see you then.